the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. The four Gospels of the holy month of Kiek all come from the first chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. And maybe more so than any other time of the year, except perhaps for the holy fast of Lent, we pay very special attention to these four Gospels. We know what comes next after the Gospel next Sunday, which will be the Gospel of, of the birth of St. John. And then the week, or a little bit less than a week, we'll read the Gospel of the Nativity. And we know these Gospels in succession in order. The Gospel that's going to come after the Gospel of the, fe the Feast, we probably do not, do not know it. So the idea is that this has become part of our knowledge, these four Gospels. And we've read them so many times and we've discussed them so many times. This is one of people's favorites because we sort of get a glimpse into the lives of a few of our favorite people. The Virgin St. Mary, from when we first heard about her as our Holy Mother, there is a tie and a connection to her that we have as humans. We look at her as our mother and we watch her, even in her young age, be an example for us about how to live and how to be. And one of the great examples that St. Mary put forth, and sometimes the thing we sometimes overlook in her life, is that when she heard that her cousin Elizabeth was going to have a child in her old age, the archangel Gabriel told her this news as he told her, also her own special news, that she will bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, and he would be great and will be called the Son of God. When she heard that also St. Elizabeth was also having a child, she did sort of the opposite of what she should have done if she was thinking in a very worldly matter, because for her, her life was in danger. And we don't realize this because we sort of we're in modern times and we don't realize, but if anyone would have known that she was pregnant before she was married, that could have been a chance for her to be killed. And so the normal thing to do would have been to just stay home in hiding until the time comes, even if she had faith that the Lord would settle all the matters moving forward, she probably, and what I probably would have done, is to stay home and stay out of trouble. But she being full of the Holy Spirit and truly acting as if the Lord Christ Jesus, the Savior of the world, actually dwells in her, which of course he was, she instead thought about her cousin Elizabeth and wished to be there for her, to help her in her last trimester of, of the birth of St. John. And even the gospel says at the end that she stayed there only three months. She didn't stay long after the birth of St. John, perhaps didn't even attend the birth, but stayed there for the most important part, which is to serve her elderly uh, kinsmen and to be with her during this difficult time, as any mother and even father would know, that third trimester is very difficult for even the most fit person. And so Taban, someone that's in their old age, it would have been very hard. She didn't deny herself the chance for service. The beautiful section of this gospel, and the thing that always catches my eye, is the greeting of St. Elizabeth when she first saw St. Mary. 
the gospel says, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, with a loud voice, meaning that she wasn't just talking and like greeting someone at her door. She was making a proclamation about this great moment that was happening in the world that would change the course of history forever. These two women, known by not that many people, perhaps St. Elizabeth was more well known because of her husband, Zacharias, was the priest. But these two women in this greeting, and just as important, if not more important, the greeting of the baptizer, St. John, and his Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, changed, like I said, the course of history as we know it. And it was this moment where Elizabeth, not just speaking, but proclaiming and saying, as if this is a great announcement, just like I remember I used to work in Century City, and it was during the time of President Obama, and he would come often and do fundraising and stuff. So they would tell us, they would make this great announcement that the president is coming in this area, so you have to either stay here and not move or leave early. When there's an important issue, everybody knows what's happening. Or when there was um, any sort of big moment in the, in the world, uh, or in the United States, the president of the country will go in front of the TV and make a proclamation announcement. And the loud voice aspect of that is that he's speaking into a microphone that's going to be broadcast over the whole world. And so when we read here that she was spoke out with a loud voice and said, this is a proclamation, something that the Holy Spirit is speaking. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And if you pay close attention, it says, as soon as the voice of your greeting, so the Holy Virgin, St. Mary, carrying our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ in her womb, the incarnation, the Son of God, the Word of God, now had this authority so that when she offered her greeting, which was filled with this Holy Spirit, which was filled with the joy and grace of Christ our Lord. Elizabeth said, For indeed, as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And to be honest, it was one of the first realizations that I had made that we don't often speak of joy, especially in the Holy Bible, except for this moment moving forward, except for when Christ came. The only other times that joy is constantly expressed in the Old Testament is in the writings and the prophecies of David the prophet, who was, of course, prophesying about the coming of the Lord Christ, and he became a type of Christ. But until this moment, there wasn't that much joy written about. There wasn't this idea of joy. So I looked up the word joy in the Bible, and I found a couple of verses that sort of hit home this idea of what joy is for us. And this connection of St. Mary the Virgin announcing to St. Elizabeth her greeting, and St. Elizabeth being filled with joy and her son, St. John, in her womb, also leaping up for joy in hearing the greeting of St. Mary and being visited by the Lord Christ. Christ said to his disciples on the night before his crucifixion, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So this is the idea of um, moving forward. I become an example for my disciple, and as I 
am showing love, my disciple also learns the same. And so Christ makes it very clear. He says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And I'm not just leaving it to you as that. I'm telling you, I first did it, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. The example and the teaching of how we connect to God. And then the next verse. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. And so it's a confirmation of this idea that who brings us joy but Christ our Savior. And this is the moment that he revealed, not necessarily this verse, but this is kind of the tie-in, but this moment, the greeting between St. Mary and St. Elizabeth, with Christ present, fills the whole room with joy, fills both women with the Holy Spirit. St. John, an undeveloped, still baby, leaps for joy in the womb. Christ, still probably just a small seed, a speck in the womb of St. Mary, makes such a huge difference. And then you read later on him explain, I love my father and my father loves me. I keep his commandments, so you also keep his commandments. Why? So that you can keep your joy that you have because I'm here with you, because I'm only going to be here for a little while. If you keep my commandments and you do as I have said, your joy stays in you and your joy may be full. It's a reminder for us, obviously, that the joy of our Lord Christ is inescapable if we're constantly living and entrenched in his commandments, blessed by his presence in everything that we do, filled with his spirit in everywhere we go, focused on his words and everything that we see and we read. When this happens and we're connected to the Lord Christ, he fills us with his joy and it's inescapable. And it doesn't go anywhere. And it doesn't leave us. St. Peter, later on, also speaks of this joy that we have in Christ. In his uh, epistle, the first epistle, chapter 1, verse 8, he says, Whom having not seen you love, referring again to Christ, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. And we read in this, this idea of faith, connecting us to the joy of Christ and that the faith that we have keeps us focused on the gifts that he provides to us. St. Mary, when she heard from Archangel Gabriel that St. Elizabeth was pregnant in the sixth month and she heard that she herself would have a son, she believed with her whole heart and said, let it be to me according to your word. This idea of her believing without the physical aspect of what needs to happen in order for anyone to have a child is a matter of faith indescribable. For her to risk her life, even if she didn't know for sure that she would have a child, the rumors that would be surrounding her, for her to go visit her cousin Elizabeth, to trust the angel that Elizabeth also is having a child, and to put all her faith and trust in the Lord. You see what St. Peter is speaking of, whom having not seen you love. So he's telling us, you can also capture this faith, this faith of our mother, the Virgin St. Mary, when she believed with her whole heart the words that she had heard. We can also have the same faith and St. Peter also gives us credit because he says at first, whom having not seen, you love. Though you do know now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. This is the joy of Christ that we find through faith, not just in his presence, but also through faith. Joy also is connected to us in our interactions with the Lord. 
Joy comes to us through faith and acting on our faith. And when we ask him of things and we receive him, we experience that joy again. We experience the coming of Christ. We experience his presence in our lives. That's why the Lord always tells us to pray. Because when we pray and we receive from the hands of our Lord the things that we've specifically asked for, whether now or in the future, whether immediately or in 10, 15, 20, 30 years, we experience his joy and we experience his presence. St. John speaks of this when he writes the words of Christ again to his disciples and he says, this is Christ speaking, until now you have has nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So the presence of Christ brings us joy. Our faith in Christ brings us joy. And using our faith, our prayers in faith, asking in his name, we even end the Lord's Prayer by saying, in Christ Jesus our Lord. We end every prayer in his name to follow this commandment that he gave to us so that we can receive an answer to our prayers, which equals what? That our joy may be full. The last thing, this joy that's been expressed here is something that we all desire and all want. And sometimes we misunderstand joy and how we receive it. We think of it as something that comes through eating and drinking, through money and pleasure, through serving our various lusts, to fulfilling our deep physical desires. And oftentimes, as men and women grow older, they realize very quickly that our time wasted chasing after all of these things brings us a joy that's not complete, that's missing something, that's only temporary, that's not full. St. Paul speaks of this in his book to the Romans. He says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy. And if anything, this is the time of righteousness, peace, and joy. This is the moment where the angels appeared to the shepherds and said, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill towards men. How do we find this joy? Well, I've been saying it. The first thing is acknowledging the presence of Christ in your life and everything that you do. And not being naive or silly enough to deny his presence in order to fill what you want. So I always think about it if like my father of confession was standing around me, I would probably not lie or say bad words or do bad things. I would always be thinking of Christ and, and working towards good things because I want my father to believe that I'm a good person. It's a normal uh, human reaction. We do this with each other. Depending on the people that we're with, we act differently. If we're with sometimes our friends, um, when we're younger, when we're, when we're with our friends at school, we act differently than when we're at home with our parents. When we're with even our friends at school, we sometimes act differently than when with our friends at church. It doesn't matter what age you are. When we're with people that say bad words, oftentimes we join them in saying bad words. But when we're with people that don't say bad words, we don't. When we're with people that are fasting and eating, we fast with them, even if we ourselves aren't fasting. But when we're with people that aren't fasting, we join with them with whatever they're doing. This idea that we let ourselves go is a denial of the presence of Christ in our lives. And therefore, we hide from ourselves the presence of his fullness, of his joy. And so it's a choice that we make by the decisions that we make in our lives. If we deny Christ's presence and we do what our heart desires, then we receive whatever we get. If we believe in Christ's presence, 
and believe in the joy that is inexpressible through his presence in our lives, then we invite Christ into our lives in everything that we do. So instead of doing things that would be pushing Christ away, we do things to invite Christ into our houses. So for instance, today many of, all, many of us are going to be sitting with family and friends and celebrating the birth of Christ. We're lucky because we get to celebrate it multiple times. But it depends on what you invite into your setting. If you invite Christ into your setting and you offer praise and you offer thanksgiving and you read from his scripture and you speak to each other in love and patience and kindness with joy, then the whole setting will be filled with joy and be filled with Christ. Who can deny that? But if we're always thinking about jealousy and anger and resentment and words said before and things that were said in the past, and what we're going to do essentially is we're going to push Christ away from the setting so that we can indulge in ourselves and in our prides and in our anger and in our lusts and in our desires. The choice is ours. It's up to us. When we have faith in the Lord Christ that he is present in our lives at all times, we can live and abide in his joy and accept it and not be afraid of his presence. This requires a great change in our lives so that instead of always looking towards what I need, I look towards inviting Christ into everything that I'm doing. It goes to show us that when St. Mary visited Elizabeth, this is the joy that she accepted into her home. This is the joy that her infant son, not even born yet, understood when he leaped for joy in her womb. The presence of Christ, the faith in his words, the abiding in his testaments and his rules, our living in him wholly and fully brings us this joy that is inexpressible. And this joy can be shaken sometimes with things that happen in our lives, but in the end, the joy is full and complete. May the Lord, who came and dwelt among us to save us, fill us with the joy of his nativity and his birth. May we also experience this joy that St. Elizabeth and St. John experienced when the greeting of St. Uh, Mary filled the house of St. Zacharias with this joy and peace of Christ. May Christ al always be allowed into your heart and into your homes and glory be to our God forever. Narfauki beste hakokin ma ali sobat nasi batuki koilin muboroka antifinisa wa muboroka hi athamori. Botnik min agli hadha numagidu kika walidatil <laughs>